In the following tutorial, we will cover how to create basic geometry inside Maya. If you head up to Create and under Polygon Primitives, we have a list of options of basic geometric shapes that we can create. They go from sphere to cube, cylinder, and so on. When you begin modeling, I would suggest sticking with basic shapes such as sphere, cube, cylinder, and plane. The rest are usually not used and they're too complex to begin there will be times when you are going to use some of these to start modeling from but for the most part sphere, cube, cylinder and plane should be just enough to start. So to create objects inside Maya you can go up to create polygon primitives or if you created your custom shelf and you put a few objects in here for creating basic primitives you can just click on these and create from the custom shelf. So I'm going to go up to create polygon primitives and let's create a cube. So once we selected the cube, you can see that it says drag the base in the grid then pull up for height. That means that this is interactive menu to create your objects. Left click, hold, drag, you select your the size of the cube that you want, release and then you drag for height. Now right now we see, we are seeing a wireframe if you click on Five, we can see a shaded view. You can also go up to the viewport under shading, smooth shade all or wireframe. Now this process of creating our primitives with a multiple mouse clicks is not really intuitive. Uh, by default it's turned on and we want to turn this off. So go back up to create polygon primitives and here under interactive creation you want to turn this off. So now let's delete and let's create uh, another cube. Go to create polygon primitives cube. And what this does, it creates a cube at 000, zero, zero origin. Now as a side note, in our previous tutorial we covered how to create the custom shelf. We also placed a few items on that custom shelf, some of the primitives here. Uh, and let me delete this what we created. So if I click on any of these, we can create our object but what happens here is we are back at drag the base on the grid and we have to create our object the same way again. The reason is is when we created our shelf we used these objects with their default settings meaning that we had interactive creation turned on. When creating a custom shelf all the options that we have for our objects in the drop down menu they are kept and when we put them on the shelf they retain the options from the drop down menu. So in order for us to change that we will need to just simply delete and replace these objects back up with the custom shelf just like we did in the custom shelf menu. So now that we deleted these we can simply hold down control shift go back up to create polygon make sure that interactive creation is turned off so let's turn this off first now hold down control shift create polygon primitives and let's put these four cube primitives back on uh, cylinder and plane. Now we have these four back on our custom shelf and if we click on them we don't have the interactive menu turned on and now we have our primitives right in our viewport without the interactive menu and multiple clicking. Another option that we can use is under polygon primitives all the primitive shapes have an option box right next to them. So if we click on that we can set how big the objects will be when we create them if the create UVs is turned on. I keep everything at default it's fine but you have an option of going into each option and changing that as well. Now for the most part when you are creating and modeling environments you'll be using polygons to create your objects. There will be times when we will go up and use NURBS but in the end we will convert our NURB objects back into polygons. So polygons is what we are going to be working with when we model on environments. So let's delete this. We can just simply select and hit delete. Next let's talk about basic object manipulation such as rotation, scale, movement and using the hotkeys in order to move our objects inside the viewport. So let's create a basic cube. So here we have our cube and you see this transformation gizmo. If we deselect it, it's gone. If we select it, it appears. To move the object around in the viewport, we can just simply 
hold down any of the XYZ transformation gizmos here and we can just drag it around in the viewport and I'm hitting Z key to undo so to undo it's not control Z as in other applications it's just simple Z if we want to scale our object if you click on R the transformation gizmo changes we can transform uniformly by selecting the middle gizmo and left clicking holding down and just scaling up and down moving the mouse left to right or we can scale on XYZ axis only so you have an option of how you want to scale your object if you want to get back to move tool just hit W key if you hit the E key you have rotation and it works the same way by selecting the gizmo where you want to rotate your object on on which axis you can rotate your object by highlighting and it turns yellow so you know it's active and then just simply left mouse clicking and dragging to rotate the object so the WER keys are very quick and you can just cycle through them as you're working with your objects if you hit the Q key it goes back up to the select tool so also we have here on the left hand side we have our tools that we just covered Q the select tool here is the move tool which is W key the next one is the rotate tool and we have the scale tool so we do have these keys on the left hand side but the hot keys is what you should learn to speed up your workflow inside Maya and I rarely go on the left hand side and choose any of these I use the hot keys uh, which are Q W E R if we deselect our object you can see that right now it's flat shaded with no wireframe often when modeling environments it's very important to note where the wireframe is and we can look at the wireframe version as we're modeling by going up to shading and we can turn on wireframe on shaded now we can see our wireframe if you have a hard time looking at your viewport with this shaded view we can turn this shaded view off by going up to window setting preferences going to the preferences and under display we can background gradient to turn off and now we have our default non-shaded view so this all depends on how you like to work I'm gonna keep my gradient on so now we have our wireframe on our object now let's talk about different options and the uh, hotkeys that we can turn uh, on and off our viewport key 4 we go into wireframe 5 is the shaded view 6 is the textures which we don't have any textures on it right now and if we hit 7 we go into the light view and we don't have any lights so the quick hotkeys are 4 wire 5 shaded 6 is texture view which we don't have at this point and 7 lights and you can find most of these options under shading as well as under lighting so these two will allow you to have a little bit more options of how you want your objects to appear in the viewport right here up below the viewport options we have some of the more commonly used functions that we just covered which are the wireframe view the shaded view the texture view and they're right up here so we can use the hotkeys or we can go up here and turn on and off and cycle through how we want our objects to appear as well so you have qu quite a few options on how you view your object inside Maya next let's cover component view every object has their own component view such as vertices you can ma manipulate polygons you can manipulate edges so in order for us to go into the component view of this object we simply right click and hold down the right mouse button and we have here options for this object we have edge we have vertices vertex face face and so on the most commonly used for modeling are going to be edge vertex face and then go back up to object mode object mode is what we are seeing right now if we go under edge we can select each individual edge if you want to select multiple edges just hold on shift and if we need to move these edges while being inside the component mode we can hit the W key for move we can rotate by hitting the E key or we can hit the R key for scale and we can modify those two selected edges if we want to jump over to any other component mode we can go to face we can go to vertex here we can select our vertices we can move the vertices or we can just jump over to the face we can hit the W key go to the and move the face we can hit the E key to rotate or we can hit the R key to scale the face 
So getting familiar with quickly jumping from each component mode and quickly selecting the component that you want to work with is really becomes intuitive. So spend a little bit of time of getting yourself very familiar with how to switch between component modes, how to create your objects, how to manipulate your objects, and how to switch quickly as you're working. This is going to greatly speed up your workflow inside Maya. Next let's talk about the attribute editor for each object. As we talked before in the very beginning of this series, uh, we have an attribute editor and this will change based on the object that we have chosen in our scene. So by selecting the object we can hit Control A, open this up and here we can cycle through various options such as uh, we can apply texture through here, uh, we can go to surface properties, we can go through and uh, work with all material attributes and we can go up the hierarchy back to the object. You can also modify and move and rotate scale the objects from the attribute editor by typing in various values through the attribute editor and uh, we will go more into depth in covering more of these as we begin to create our environments. Next we can name our object so if we select our object right here up on top we can simply double click on the P cube name and we can rename to anything we want simple cube press enter now we have our object named here we can input our translate values, rotate as well, uh, scale and so on. If we click on the polycube inputs we have width, height, depth, subdivision so we can increase our subdivisions right through here and so if we want more subdivisions as we build our cube uh, we can do it through here. Uh, we can also as we are working with the object again we can go into edit mesh and we can use some of these other functions to uh, increase the subdivisions uh, but when you build a new object you can also do it through the input. So you have multiple options on how you want to uh, attack your object to begin modeling. So as you're working with the basic shapes and uh, with the basic geometry inside Maya I would suggest just simply insert a few basic shapes inside Maya and just begin playing around with manipulating faces and don't worry exactly what you're creating just get comfortable with uh, moving faces, moving vertices, changing, uh, uh, navigating inside the viewport. Uh, spend about 30 minutes and just play around with objects. Get comfortable uh, with the interface of Maya. Open up the attribute editor, uh, just mess around, see what each one of these do. Work with the channel box editor. Uh, you can modify some of these values. You don't have to type in the values here. You can simply select the text that you want and then go into the viewport and middle, middle mouse click anywhere you want in the viewport and you can just modify that specific value. Now we just recommend spending 30 minutes and messing around and getting really comfortable inside my interface uh, with the basic shapes.